today I'm going to be doing a, I think it's going to be a little bit of a shorter tutorial, not an hour long one, so. Um, a few people have requested this, and also it kind of fits in my vehicle series, which I want to continue. So, in this video we're going to be showing how to make a puppet ride in a vehicle or drive a vehicle. Um, I'm not going to be doing animations, I will be showing how to activate animations, like the actual like outputs you'll need to look at to animate, but I'm not going to be going over and keyframing everything, except for like a sitting pose. So first off, what we're going to want to do is, all we have right now, as you can see, this car. It's a very popular car in the Dream Universe. It's a very good car as well. I'm not sure why it's going to be the reverse, but as you can see, it's taking control of the controls. I wasn't able to get out of it, and I wasn't able to possess the player character. So what we want to do first is we want to make this taxi um, not force possession. So what you want to do is scope into this taxi with one and X. And then there's a huge microchip. That's all the collision data because this thing can fall apart and stuff. You don't need to worry about anything. That all all of these wires you don't have to care about. Just open up the microchip with L1 and X. And this green run, this green one right here is the controller sensor. Open it up with L1 and Square. And we're gonna go to the important properties page. And we're going to go ahead and turn off Force Possession. And we're going to turn it to Remote Controllable for the Possession Mode. And we want to turn this off. And the reason why we're turning it off is because we only want it to go when our puppet is inside of it. So the first thing that we want to do is... How are we going to move our puppet into the vehicle? And how are we going to prevent the puppet from colliding with the vehicle? That's actually pretty simple. What we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and move this logic of the vehicle over a bit. And we're going to go ahead and open up the player with L1 and X. And then we're going to open up the logic down here with L1 and X. Now, Dreams has teleporters, which are very useful tools. They will teleport to a tag and they will match the tag's orientation and the tag's um, position pretty much exactly. But it only works with tags, unfortunately. And it will teleport to the nearest tag. So this will work with any vehicle as long as you're getting in next to the vehicle door. Um, so first of all, what we want to do is we want to, when we're driving, we want our player to stay still and we want our player to um, not collide with the vehicle so we don't get any animation mishaps. So we're going to make a keyframe. So we're going to go to the animate section of our assembly menu. We're going to get a keyframe out. And there's a couple things we want to do. First of all, let's get him in a sitting pose. So it looks like he's actually, you know, driving the vehicle. You can adjust this depending on the vehicle that you're using. If you're not using this taxi, I'm just going to make it look presentable or just not presentable. Just something that looks vaguely like somebody at a driver's seat. Like this. And then once you have posed your puppet like so, go ahead and do L1 and circle to back out. And we're going to open up the properties panel of this puppet. And this is some, this is really easy to do. We're going to go to physical properties. We're going to make it not movable and we're going to make it not collidable. This way, no external forces are going to force the puppet to move and we are not going to collide and mess with the physics of the car. All right, so now we want to turn this keyframe on when we're in the car, and we also want to teleport into the driver's seat of the car. So, 
first of all, what we're going to want to do is we want a way to actually, you know, activate this. So there's a couple of ways we could do this. Um, you could just have it activate from anywhere, or what I prefer is to have a system on our vehicle logic. And what we're going to do is we're going to get a tag from our gadgets menu, it sensors and input. And this is going to be a vehicle tag. This is just going to let the player logic know that there's a vehicle nearby. And this will allow um, the puppet to see that there's a vehicle nearby and then go into this sitting state and teleporting state. There's a couple things we want to do first um, before we go further because there's a chance that if you have like two vehicles next to each other the player will detect both of them and will try to get in both at once and then you'll control both cars and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to get an exclusive gate from our movers and output. And what an exclusive gate does, it only allows one signal to be um, used at once. So where is it? I think it's in logic and processing. Yeah. It looks like a gate and you have to name it in order for it to work. So we're going to do player vehicle selection. And most of this doesn't matter. All we want is to have the reset mode automatic. And then priority, if you have a vehicle nearby that you wish the player to get in, no matter what other vehicles are nearby, you can raise the priority and then if you turn on interrupt, it'll also force the player to get into that. So for example, if you have like a tank and you want the player to get into the tank instead of the uh, taxi or like bicycle nearby, you can increase the priority and it should help. And interrupt will automatically make it so it is forced to pick the tank over the bicycle. So now we have this vehicle tag and what we're going to want to do is when this vehicle de tag is detected and we are going to display a prompt above the vehicle to show that we want to get in this vehicle and we're also going to sense when the prompt is or the button that we're asking for is pressed. So first of all, what we're going to do is output the tag output, which is the sense. And we're going to be plugging it into the gate input. And now we're going to go ahead and get a prompt thing. So we want to get a text displayer from our movers and output section of our gadgets menu. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to turn off the text box and the border, and I'm going to go ahead and make it display in the scene. And I'm going to probably have a hard time finding this because it's in the vehicle. Um, where are you? Where, oh where could you be? Oh, there's no text in it, so it's harder to see. Alright, we're going to go ahead and put it up above like that. And we're also going to make it face the camera. You can also do always on top. That way, the player knows that this vehicle specifically is the one you want to get inside of. And we're going to use triangle for the button to interact and get in. So we're going to do open bracket, or I think that's less than triangle, greater than. And that's going to give us the triangle button. And I'm going to use white color for the text. All right, that looks nice to me. We're going to go ahead and plug the gate output into the start text of our text displayer. So only when this gate is activated we'll be able to see that prompt. All right, and now we need the thing to actually get into the vehicle. So what we want is a toggle. So when we are in the vehicle, we are going to go ahead and activate the controls and when we're not in the vehicle we're going to disable the controls. So it can be a little bit complicated because there's a few things that we want to take into account. If we have the player press triangle as the player and this is we'll get the input from here from a wireless transmitter. But if we have that 
happen, and we toggle it on, then that will turn off or make it so we can't control the player anymore through this. And it will turn on this controller sensor. And we want to have this triangle button get us out of the vehicle as well. I'm not even sure what the triangle button on this does. I'm going to see that because it does output. So my point is, is that we might get a double signal, which would immediately get us out of the car. So we need to delay the signal coming from this controller sensor by about a second. But let's see what triangle does. Oh, it changes the camera view. Okay. Well, I don't want it to change the camera view. I want the touchpad to change the camera view, so we're going to go ahead and do that. Page 3, uh, I think, is it on page 2? Where are you? Yes, page 2, touchpad button. I'm going to find where triangle goes first. It goes into the next on the selector, so I'm going to delete that. Then on page two, we're going to get that touchpad, and that's going to go into our move to next output. All right, so now we'll have the triangle button free for getting out of the vehicle. So next, we're actually going to want to set up the toggle. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a combiner first, and we're going to get a timer. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to hold down the triangle button for half a second in order to actually get out of the vehicle once you're in the vehicle. So we're going to hook up our combiner to the start timer of our timer and we're going to open up the properties and we set the target time to 0.5 seconds and we want the timer type to be speed and what this is, does basically is when we press the button we're going to increase the timer and when we're not pressing the button, we're going to decrease it. So it gives us some leniency for getting out of the vehicle. All right. So now I'm going to, let's see here. We need a not gate because this is for when we're not pressing the button. It's going to go negative, so it's going to count the timer down instead. And we're going to get the triangle output from our controller sensor. And that's going to go into our not gate and the positive of our combiner. Now that we have that, we can actually get the toggle. So we're going to go ahead and get the signal manipulator from our gadgets menu, logic and processing. Go ahead and open up the properties of that. We're going to go to custom remapper. You don't have to worry about any of this. Go to edge mode and we're going to toggle output it on. So now it's just the toggle. And when this timer is finished, we're going to toggle the signal or when we receive the player input from the puppet, we're going to go ahead and toggle this. So what we need to do to get the player input from here, we're going to go ahead and get a wireless transmitter from our sensors and input. And we're going to go ahead and name this Interact. And we're going to open up the properties of the controller sensor, and we're going to do the triangle button. All right. And now we are going to get a wireless receiver and put that on our car. And we're going to plug in the gate output to the power of our wireless receiver. Then we're going to open up the properties of it and we're going to get the interact transmitter name. And we want it to be the scene. The range on the second page it needs to be the scene not any of the other shapes. And then we're going to go ahead and output the signal from transmitter into our signal manipulator. And then with that done, we're going to go ahead and plug in our signal manipulator into our controller sensor for the power port on the vehicle. All right. And now we should have all the logic on here pretty much finished. So now we just need to do the puppet logic. Um, I think there's one last thing though first. We need to actually tell the player where the seat is. So we're going to get another tag. We're going to place that down on our vehicle. And we're going to just name this as seat. 
And we want to place this so Z is forward, X is left and right, and Y is up and down. And we want this to be pretty much where our bottom will be, where the puppet's bottom will be. So I'm going to go ahead and put that right in this corner here. That looks fine to me. Can always adjust the teleporter on the player like we're gonna do. All right, so now that we have this, we don't need to output this to anything. We are good to go on the car for now. Next, we're gonna head over to the puppet logic and we are going to get a, let's see here. We want another toggle system on here, and we're going to get a signal from the receiver to toggle it, and that signal from receiver is going to be over here, and we want the try. The we're going to get a not gate actually, or no, because we want it to be only. Because if we have this not here, hmm. So if we, yeah, we want to get the triangle output from this controller sensor, and that's going to go into our wireless receivers signal to transmitter. So it's like a two-way radio actually. All right, and we're also going to get the triangle button, and that's going to go into our signal manipulator here. And when this sign signal manipulator is active, we're going to go ahead and turn on this keyframe. So we're going to sit. And we also want to open up the properties of the signal manipulator. And we want to set it to toggle as well. In the edge mode, toggle out, put it on. And the signal is going to go into our controller sensor as well. And that's going to go into our disable controls port on the important properties section, which is the imp. So that's going to prevent this from doing anything, so we're not going to be trying to walk around while we're driving our car. Alright, and then one last thing, and that would be the teleporter, and then it should be good to go. Might need to do a little bit of debugging, but I don't believe so. Let's go ahead and output the signal manipulator to our teleporter. Power port, and we want to do match target position, match target orientation. We're going to have the tag name be seat and then we are also going to get a switch from our sensors and input so we can preview our keyframe so we know where to position this little ball here because this little ball is going to match that tag exactly so we want it to be where we expect our player to sit since we placed it pretty much in the bottom corner of the seat we want to place it at our bum, basically, or behind, or rear, whatever you want to call it. It should match up pretty good, pretty well. All right, and that should be about it. Other than, I think we might need this as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna copy this not gate combiner and timer over onto the puppet logic. I believe we're going to want that for our signal from receiver in case the same issue occurs. I think it will. So we're going to delete the wire from the interact wireless transmitter and we're going to get the signal from receiver. It's going to go to our not gate, our positive gate, and then the timer finish pulse is going to go to our signal manipulator. All right, now we should be able to possess the puppet. I'm going to go ahead and turn on force possession just to get that out of the way. Let's see. Oh, one last thing. An important detail I missed is we need to actually detect the vehicle tag. So if we go into our gadgets, we're going to get a trigger zone. And. Ah, yes. Yes. This was very important. I can't believe I forgot about this. Yes. Open up your trigger zone. Properties panel. Set it to tag. And then we're going to get the vehicle tag. We're going to go ahead and increase the size of this bit. 
And we're going to move this white ball so it's pretty much at the center of the player. Alright, that looks like a decent zone size. Should detect that nicely. And we want to get an AND gate. And we're going to go ahead and get all the connectors from the input of the signal manipulator and we're going to reroute them to input A of our AND gate. And then input B is going to be our trigger zone output for the vehicle tag. And the result is going to go into the signal manipulator. Alright. And now we have the player controlling the vehicle. I'm not sure what the collision is coming from. The player isn't colliding, is he? Well, um, now, one last thing I believe we, you'd probably want is when we get out of the vehicle, you want to, you know, teleport outside of it instead of just popping out. And we also want this to not be on if the player is inside of it. So, we're going to get an AND gate. And we're going to take the input from start text and we're going to put that into A. Then we're going to get a NOT gate. I'm just going to copy the one here. I'm going to plug that into B. And then our signal manipulator is going to go ahead and plug into that NOT gate. And this is on the vehicle. And the end gate is going into the start text of our text displayer. So now when we're driving, we're not going to get that triangle prompt. Alright, and one last thing is we want to teleport outside of the vehicle when we're done driving. So we're going to copy the seat tag and I'm going to rename it to door. Or you could have it pretty much any name you want. And then I'm going to go ahead and move this outside of the vehicle. Pretty much right where the door is. I'm going to rotate it so Z is facing away from the vehicle. Alright, and we want to copy our teleporter on the player. And this is going to go ahead and teleport to door. And let's see, that looks fine. And we only want to activate this when this signal manipulator has been activated and it was just deactivated. So that can be a little bit tricky, but it shouldn't be too difficult. So we want to get a signal manipulator and we're going to go ahead and make it so it has a smooth fall in the properties, about a second or half a second. And we're going to plug in the signal manipulator to this other signal manipulator. So our toggle signal manipulator on the player is going to plug into our smooth fall signal manipulator. And what this is going to give us is a signal telling us that this was just active. But we're also going to get a not gate. And this is going to tell us that it is not active. So if it has been previously active and it is currently not active, then we're going to go ahead and teleport to the door. I'm going to lower this smooth fall to 0.1 and I'm also going to get a calculator so we get a smooth output from this AND gate we're going to make. And this basically is saying if this is greater than 1, if the value from our signal manipulator is greater than 1, then we're going to output 1. So it's a stronger signal than 0 0.1 times 1. I think AND gates multiply signals as well, at least. From Little Big Planet, they did. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and open up the calculators properties panel, and we're gonna set the type to greater than. So if A is greater than B, then we're gonna output one. So we're gonna hook up the signal output of our signal manipulator to A, and then we're gonna get an AND gate, and we're gonna plug in the results from our calculator to A, and then NOT gate to B, and then the result is gonna go into our door teleporter. Alright, let's see how this works. Well, it doesn't appear want wanting to get out. So why is that? Ah, because we have to hold it down. That's right. So I'm going to change this timer here to about 
0.2 seconds or 0.1 second works as well. And I think we're going to do the same on our timer on the player. Let's try that. Nope, it does not appear to be working. Why is that? Well, it does appear to be doing something to the signal on the player. Oop, don't want to delete any wires. It's only a pulse, why is it not deactivated? This is so weird. That is strange. Strange indeed. Oh, I know why. I think it's because this is a normal wire and this is outputting as a fat wire. So we're going to get a splitter and we're going to split the value from the receiver and we're going to output positive into our signal manipulator and we're going to delete the, the value coming straight out of the wireless receiver and we're going to do this the same way on the other end on our puppet. So signal from the, I think, let's see here. Oh, that's different. Ah, yes. Okay, so signal from our wireless receiver. We're going to split that and we want to output whatever here to um, positive and or negative. And we're going to split the triangle output of our controller sensor here. And we're going to output positive to our A port of our AND gate to toggle the signal manipulator. Let's see if that works. There we go. I think that might be classified as a glitch, the whole signal manipulator thing, but I'm not sure. Oh, wow. <laughs> I did not expect that to happen. Okay. Well, now we can drive around to a hurt's content as a puppet. So if you want to add animations for like steering and like feet pedals and stuff like that, what you're going to want to do is you want to, instead of disabling the controls, we're going to modify our keyframe here, the sitting keyframe. We're going to put the, the properties of the puppet and we're going to turn walk speed to zero, run speed to zero. And we're going to go ahead and go to the, let's see here, where is it? Hmm. Where is the, okay. We're going to go to the behavior tab, which is the cogs. And on the bottom, we're going to turn off procedural animation and procedural walk. Well, actually, I believe it's just, we just want to disable procedural walk. Yes. So we're still going to get breathiness and stuff like that, just not walking. All right. And with that finished, now you would have this free. So if you want to animate turning left, you would split the left stick value, not this left stick value, but you would split the second page, no, third page left stick, left stick local. You get the X, so that's left and right, and then you split it again to get right on positive and left on negative. And you would play keyframes with these to get turning left and right, or you can do um, timelines instead. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It is a bit shorter. I want to make something a bit quicker than usual. It is still a pretty decently long tutorial, 30 minutes. I didn't expect it to take that long. Alright, I hope you all like the video, comment, like, and subscribe, and again, I have a Patreon, a uh, private Discord server, where you can get direct help from me, um, and other members of the community, so if you're interested in that, if you or if you just want to support me, I have the link to that in the description. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye, everyone.